Okay, before I talk about anything about this game, I have to point out my problem with a large majority of Facebook games. They suck. I'm talking about a lot of the Zynga and Playfish-style games. Those that essentially rely on you spamming your friends list in order to progress past a certain point, or just pay real cash instead. With that out of the way, The Sims Social is no different than those. Now, aren't you excited to see what I think about it? Okay, so let's jump right into the game itself. All you need to play this so-called Social Sims game is a computing device connected to the internet, a compatible browser with Flash installed, and a Facebook account. Once you get past the loading screen that's quite similar to the full Sims games, you're greeted with the Create a Sim screen where you create your Sim. The most important thing to choose here is your name, skin tone, gender, and main personality, as all the other options can be changed later with no hassle. The level of customization is rather limited compared to The Sims 3, but that's to be expected with a Facebook game. It's actually made the transition quite acceptably, in my opinion, and still has quite a variety of faces, hairs, clothing, and accessories to choose from, and I decided to go back to 1985 and hit 88 miles per hour with my main Sim here. After this, you're greeted by none other than Bella Goth of previous Sims game fame, welcoming you to the little town of Little Haven which is a little pointless because you'll never really see the actual town. She exclaims she'd love to help you move in, but you'll note that you actually have no choice in the matter. So this first interaction has gone from one of friendly guidance to forced servitude. At this point, the game's mandatory tutorial kicks in, and you have no choice but to do every word of Bella's bidding. Not unlike some sparkly vampires I've heard of. This is here to learn the basic mechanics of the game, but seriously, I hate any tutorial that's mandatory, because it feels like I'm being poked with a cattle prod against my will. Once you finally get through being forced to gorge yourself on junk food, compose crappy songs on the guitar, and dance awkwardly in Slave Master Bella's house, you are then set free of your bonds and returned to your personal little abode. Well, not before being asked very blatantly to invite friends to join you in your state of slavery to Master Goth. And really, if you want to play this game very long, you should accept this invitation, but we'll get to why soon enough. First, let's go over the UI. Along the top of the screen, you've got some numbers that basically determine how long you have to spend with the game today. You've got your virtual in-game money, or simoleons, Sim Cash, which is bought using real-life money from a credit card or Facebook credits or something like that, Social points, which can be used to purchase special items within the game, your sim's current energy, and finally the sim's current experience level. Along the bottom of the screen, you have information pertaining to your current social and personal status. Says, like what traits you have active if you're single or married, your needs, customization options for your house and sim, how nice or awful your house is, and your current neighbors. These will pretty much determine what you need to progress in The Sims Social, but just in case you're clueless, there are little heads in white squares to the left of the screen which tell you exactly what to do. Well, I guess they're more like ideas that are very, very strongly enforced. You can think of these as similar to opportunities in The Sims 3, except that they will never go away until you complete them. They mostly involve things that you'd probably already do, like talking to other Sims, playing the guitar, using the computer, taking a crap, etc. And any time you do one of these things, your sim will fart out simoleons, energy, and random items onto the floor. I guess it's to add some other reason to molest your computer's mouse while playing the game and cater to the ADHD, OCD, FML crowd, but it's really pointless in my opinion, especially since they'll add themselves to your inventory soon enough. The problem with following these different sim's biddings is a lot of these things I didn't want my sim to do. For instance, I was satisfied with my plants being just how they were, but no, here comes Mr. What's-His-Stupid-Face telling me I have to grow new ones and wait like eight hours of real time for them to grow again. Yeah, I know, the idea here is to give players some kind of objective and keeps the progression moving steadily forward, but one of the biggest reasons I play The Sims in the first place is because there were no objectives and I could just do whatever the nuts I wanted. Another reason I enjoy the Sim series in general is because you have to take care of your Sim or else they die in a variety of horrible ways. But guess what? There's no dying in the Sims social. No, they just look sad and make terrible grating noises at you, but they'll never die. No starvation, no electrocution, not even any passing out from exhaustion. I guess the biggest reason for this was maybe so people wouldn't have to start all over when their sim died or something, but come on, that's like giving someone a steak and then setting it inside of a glass case they can never open. You can see the potential awesomeness there, but it's just not in reach. 
You know, that pretty much sums up a lot about this game. Just when you start having a little fun, the thing runs out of some arbitrary resource like energy, plasters a message on your screen, and asks you to either pay up or make your Facebook friends want to block your application requests. The problem with this is that every time you feel like you're getting somewhere, either with an activity or another sim, you're just held back by a restriction that is only there so that you feel inclined to spread the game like a virus or fork over your credit card. Now don't get me wrong, I have no problems with games asking you to do things like this if it's for extra content, you know, stuff you don't need, but when a game essentially locks you into doing something to progress at all, that's bullcrap. I am aware that is the point of these kinds of games, but whatever the case, it still blows and makes me feel like I'm being finagled into a pyramid scheme. Let me just give you another example. At one point, the pesky parallelogram people to the left ask you to buy a new room for your house, which by the way is only doable in preset sections, so you won't be able to do any customized home building, but whatever. Once you do buy a new room and place it, you're then told you need to ask three friends in order to actually build the new room or else pay the equivalent of about two and a half dollars in sim cash. I had already spent my 20 initial sim cash on other things the game had suggested for me, and I don't have three Facebook friends that play this game and I sure as balls ain't gonna pay real cash. So screw it, I'll just have an empty room full of cones. Oh, but yeah, there's the whole social aspect of the game to enjoy too, right? After all, the word social is in the title, so you would think that would be a big part of the game, correct? Nope! The game is about as social as receiving an email that looks like spam, but it has your friend's name on it, so you open it anyways. You know that row of neighbors on the bottom of the screen? You can add any of your Facebook friends that play the game to your neighborhood, and you'll be able to visit them anytime you want. At first, I thought this would be kind of a cool experience, and something similar to the dearly departed Sims Online, but no, of course not. All you can do is go to their house, and you can see them as an NPC. And it's not like you're even seeing what they're doing in real time. You can't chat with them. You can't do anything but look at their avatar stand there. Lame. You may as well just play the regular Sims and add your Sims Sim from the Sim Exchange. And it's the same friggin' thing. You can have Woohoo with their Sim without their consent, though, which has the potential to be about as uncomfortable as you can imagine. So please remember whose house you're in and don't Woohoo your mom by accident. What I do like about this game is its simplicity and its sense of progression. It is The Sims at its most base level, but not as cheap and limited as some of the mobile versions of the game I've played over the years. In other words, I've played worse. It's kind of fun going around collecting random objects, crafting new items, and doing little tasks to advance your Sims' abilities and skills, just like any other Sim game. And I like how you can place things on countertops that you shouldn't be able to, like showers, toilets, and refrigerators. It really saves some floor space. I also like the isometric look to the game and how it gets me reminiscing about The Sims 1, but in the end it just makes me wish I was playing that game instead of this knockoff that begs me for my money or my friends every 30 seconds. The Sims social has a certain appeal, but for me it lasted all of 10 minutes. If you're off somewhere and you can't play any of the full Sims games, it might be okay for a quick diversion. And if you're willing to keep coming back to it, beg your friends for help, and hand over your hard-earned cash, then by all means, who am I to stop you? But as for me, no freaking thank you. Once I ran into a dozen roadblocks that prevented me from continuing with no real reason, I had had enough and felt like I had simply wasted my time, and that is never a good feeling. But you say, oh, it's a free game, what do you expect? I've played a million times better games for free, all without being told I need to bother people or pay up. I have nothing against Facebook games. I just have a problem with stupid Facebook games, and The Sims Social is one of them.